It's been 56 years since the nation's first and only Catholic president took office. The Kennedy family was well known for its religious devotion, passed on from generation to generation. But faith has not come easily for all of them. In his new book, Mark Shriver, a nephew of JFK, describes himself at one time as being, quote, skeptical, disillusioned, and uncertain whether the church remained a force for good in the world. Of course, with the priest abuse scandal and claims of widespread cover-ups reaching far into the church hierarchy, a lot of Catholics were feeling this way. But then came a man who seemed different. On March 13th of 2013, Pope Francis became the 266th leader of the Roman Catholic Church, and for many, he breathed new life in his institution. In response, Schreiber set out to find out more about the man behind the new papacy. The journey is detailed in his new book, Pilgrimage, My Search for the Real Pope Francis. Mark Schreiber joins me now. Mark and Demetra, Thank you. congratulations. Is Thank you. the Jesuit deal part of it? I mean, you went to Jesuit high school and Holy Cross, and obviously he's the first Jesuit pope. Is that part of the... The allure? Yeah, I think so. I mean, uh, I think the Jesuits are the best teachers around. I obviously think Holy Cross is the best school, not only in Massachusetts, but in the country. Uh, and I had a great uh, number of Jesuit teachers who taught me uh, at Holy Cross. So I think that had something to do with it. But I think his gestures uh, on the balcony at St. Peter's that first night where he asked people to bless yeah. him as compared to blessing the folks at first, when he paid his hotel room, when he went to the Isle of La Permata to talk about uh, the migrant crisis in, in, in Europe. I think all of these gestures made me think, wow, this guy's a little different. And obviously his na the name, Francis, the first pope to take that name, uh, was pretty stunning as well. You mentioned also, the, the, as a non-Catholic, I was so impressed, when he's washing the feet of these young prisoners, yes. is just staggering. So is the real pope, as you, uh, in my search for the real pope, different from the public pope, as we see him, sort of a humble, frugal guy who cares about a constituency almost nobody cares about anymore, he really, poor people. Yeah, he really is committed to that. I mean, you know, those gestures you talked about, washing the kids' feet, uh, that first Holy Thursday of his papacy. You know, I worked with juvenile delinquents in Baltimore for six years. I would never have had the guts to get on the ground and wash those kids' feet. Uh, but his life has been consistent. He's completely dedicated to his boss, and that's Jesus Christ. He's completely uh, focused on that, and he is very humble, very austere. Living situation, uh, uh, double bed. I love you describe a Cordoba and Buenos Aires, like the single room with what, yeah. like a twin Sing bed or twin something? Twin bed, a bureau with three drawers, and a place it. to kneal, and that was it. You know, speak, you spent a lot of time in Argentina, I mean, and all that. You went to his roots, and yes. people who knew him when he was not Pope Francis. But uh, uh, tell the story of Sergio Sanchez. I love this, because it's something I never heard about. I mean, obviously, I never heard of the guy, yes. but I never heard about the, quote, movement either. Tell us about that. So it's a world popular movement, and it's guys like Sergio Sanchez that Pope Francis Francis has reached out to. Pope uh, Sergio collects plastic and cardboard and recycles it. He was a day laborer until the economic recession in 2001 in Argentina. And these are the kind of folks that Pope Francis hangs out with, that he actually baptizes their babies. He talks to them on his days off. He goes into their neighborhoods on their days off. And the Pope has convened these people three times, uh, once in, in, twice actually now in Rome, once in Brazil. And they are the slum dwellers of uh, you know, Kenya, uh, people that when he, Sergio first described the meeting to me, I thought, you know, as the head of the AFL-CIO, the head of the Labor Department, somebody from the UK, the big shots. But no, the Pope is interacting with guys like Sergio, who has no political power, doesn't have a lot of money at all. Um, and he really believes in this theology of the people, where the people have the knowledge and the poor people can teach folks with resources. So um, and that's really important. I mean, he talks about a poor church for the poor. But I, I think he means not just the economically poor, but all of us who are struggling, you know, sinners, people who are struggling financially, but also spiritually, emotionally. How's it changed you? I mean, it really, he, he rocks you to the core. If you read what he writes and you really listen to what he's trying to do, he's trying to change the way we interact as human beings. Do you live differently as a result of this I'm work trying. I mean, I think if you ask my wife and kids, they'd say, you know, I'm struggling. Uh, but, you know, he has this great story of interacting with a woman who's a prostitute in yeah. Buenos Aires. And he really, he called her Senora. And she thanked him for the food he gave her, but she really thanked him most for calling her Senora. So do you look at a homeless person? Do you ask them their name? Do you give them, when you give them money, do you say, how is your life? And really get to know them, or do you try to avoid giving them money and get out of the way? So you go from disillusionment to 
uh, uh, at least openness. But at the same time, we all marveled at who am I to judge, but the answer is the church is still judging. Uh, sexual abuse crisis, we're ground zero here, as you know very yes. well. Yes. There's great disappointment that this commission that's chaired by uh, Cardinal O'Malley has not said the right things, but has not done the right things. Women as well. So where do you come out on those things where the words have all been right, but the actions haven't followed? Well, I think the answer is that uh, the church is a human institution. Uh, could Pope Francis be doing more? Undoubtedly. Could he be doing more on the women's issues, the sexual abuse issues? I think the answer to that is yes. Uh, but, you know, it's a big old institution and it's going to take time to move it. And that's not the answer a lot of us want to hear. Uh, but I think they're going to see women deacons in the Catholic Church before too long. And if you thought that would happen five or ten years ago, people would have thought you're crazy. So there are changes afoot. And the way he interacts with people and asks us to interact uh, with each other will make a change in, in people's lives. You know, for a soul who is so kind, there's a piece of your book where he tells fellow priests, don't talk about politics, and I assume it's because of the risky environment. Well, he talks politics. Early on, he ta said, and I'll paraphrase what he said about Donald Trump, a guy who talks about building walls rather than building bridges is not a true Christian. What's your prediction about what the relationship is going to be like between Trump and the Pope? The Pope doesn't fit into a box as a progressive or a conservative favoring Democrats or Republicans or independents. And I don't think he looks at everything in a two or four year cycle. I think he talks and says the truth as he best he understands it. And he tries to discern which the Jesuits teach you to try to do to understand uh, what God is telling you to do. Uh, so I think he's going to speak out. He's a bridge builder, has always been in his career. He reaches out to, as you said, the frontiers, to the periphery, to the poor, to the powerless. And he, that has been consistent throughout his life. So I think if President Trump or, uh, the con or Congress doesn't reach out, they'll hear about it. Uh, but so will the leadership in other countries in Europe and Central and South America as well. Before I don't you... think he cares specifically about the U.S. He cares about all of us. Speaking of, well, that's the Pope. Uh, you work with kids. That's yes. the organization you run. The What's children, the actually. prospect for in this administration with this Congress it's going to be for tough. the needs of poor kids? It's going to be tough. I mean, when you look at the budget and you know that there are uh, the entitlements, then you look at President-elect Trump's vow to defeat ISIS. Did you have trouble saying that? It was hard saying I, it, well, isn't it? <laughs> it is, isn't it? It's pretty hard to believe. Okay, but, go ahead. Uh, I'm sorry. But the bottom line is when you look at his investment in defeating ISIS in the military, uh, and the fact that um, the entitlements take up such a big part of the budget, the things that are most likely to get cut when you look also factor in tax cuts for businesses and individuals, mm -hmm. it's going to be discretionary spending on the most vulnerable. Um, so we hope that doesn't happen, but you've got to stand up and make sure uh, and fight for it. And that's part of what Save the Children does and what we're going to do. Good luck be with a the voice book. for kids. Good luck with those kids, Thanks too. Thanks, Appreciate Robert, it. It's great to see you. Thank you. Again, the book is Pilgrimage, My Search for the Real Pope Francis.